So carrots and fragile X, why do we think retinoic acid is important for fragile X? So my lab is a basic science lab that studies cellular molecular mechanisms under synapse um, function during behavior, and this can be in developing brain, in normal brain, or in um, a neurological disease brain. So this is a very big topic, and our focus is on the synaptic function and link it to the behavior, trying to understand how that um, the synaptic dysfunction contributes to the behavior of normality. And our approach is primarily is using rodent brains and combining mouse genetics, biochemistry, electrophysiology, and finally behavior. But we do also use patient iPS cells and induced neurons, and et cetera, et cetera. So one of the defining features of the nervous system is our ability to learn, to uh, make um, synaptic weight changes, synaptic connection changes. Um, maybe that's uh, what underlies creativity as well. What, I don't know. Uh, but the learning rule of the synapse has been defined uh, more than half a century ago by um, Donald Hub, who says that neurons um, fire together, tend to wire together, which means that the synapse um, connection between two neurons that fire together tend to be strengthened. But the problem of having a synapse is that it tends to have a runaway um, plasticity, that is, if you have one synapse that is strengthened, this increases the post of neural activity, and that leads to erroneous coincidence firing between the two neurons, that leads to strengthening, erroneous strengthening of the, this synapse, and this, as you can see, becomes a positive feedback cycle that um, allows the brain going to seizure. But we all know after learning, we don't go into a seizure. So what happens? There is a, th therefore, there is you know, the, the need for a, a, another adaptive plasticity is called homeostatic synaptic plasticity that allows the synapse, synapse, synaptic strengths to be adapted back to a normal state where um, um, the relative strength between synapse, which is the cellular memory, is still preserved. As you can see from here to here, the global synaptic strength is reduced. And this works in the reverse way as well. When you have neurons don't fire together where their synaptic connection is weakened, you can also increase globally the synaptic strength homeostatically to balance out overall activity. So in other words, decreased synaptic activity can lead to increased synaptic strengths globally. And we believe that synaptic retinal acid signaling actually mediates this particular um, type of plasticity. Now, we are familiar with retinal acid because it's a developmental morphogen and it plays an important role in, in uh, <coughs> developmental brain patterning. Um, so work from my lab recently discovered, based on the um, hints that we got from the literature that retinoic acid may be playing a role in um, adult brain, we actually found that it regulates synaptic transmission, both accelerated inhibitory transmission in the brain, in various parts of the brain, not just in the cortex, uh, not just in the hippocampus anymore. And also RA acts in a very con unconventional way that does not utilize its transcription-dependent method. Rather, it goes into the dendrite and tra um, regulates trans protein translation. So this is a cartoon highlights how we envision the whole um, system works. Normal synaptic transmission leads to in, um, regular amount of calcium in the cell that through inhibitory mechanism inhibits retinoic acid synthesis. Without at ret retinoic acid, the um, canonical receptor I alpha in this case actually acts as an mRNA binding protein that binds to the target mRNA and suppresses protein translation of these um, mRNA. And, but when you have reduced synaptic activity, it leads to closing of these channels and receptors and leads to a drop in the calcium level in the neuron that removes the inhibition and allows retinoic acid to be synthesized de novo in the neuronal locally. Um, this newly synthesized RA um, then goes to the RA alpha, binds to it, changes conformation, falls off from the messenger RNA, allows protein translation to happen. And one of these substrate is actually alpha receptor subunit, one of the gloomy receptors. So these receptors get inserted into the synapse to compensate for the lack of activity. Now, one of the other key player in this whole model is the receptor IA alpha, which is conventionally thought to be a transcription regulator that binds to DNA and binds to RA. So our work recently discovered that <coughs> in the IA alpha, the C terminal, which is the region that um, was uh, with unknown function, actually is the region that binds to, retinic, uh, binds to RA and re uh, allow, uh, renders translucent repression. And so the binding with messenger RNA is, target, uh, is sequence specific. It has two short six um, base pair sequence that's present in the five prime UTR of the substrate genes and this uh, messenger RNA, which allows the um, translation repression to occur to these specific set of mRNA. And the RA binding to IA alpha changes conformation of IA alpha allows it to fall off from the substrate of mRNA and allows translation to occur. 
And so I don't need to tell the audience here what is Fragile X syndrome, but it's to say it's caused by mutation in the fMR1 gene. And uh, most of the available uh, methods in studying Fragile X in animal models is to use fMR knockout mice. And one of the prevailing uh, leading theory is the mGluR theory that shows hyperactive mGluR signaling uh, and, and, and therefore the protein translation re uh, regulated by mGluR signaling is abnormal in the fragile X um, animals and patients likely. So how did we get back, um, let me just slow down a little bit. And so we, there's also additional um, reports showing that this change excitability of neurons in the fragile X mouse um, or fly models and also of course altered behavior. But what is really underlying these um, except um, the mGluR abnormality? So how did we come across um, fragile X? Well, in our study in RA-dependent protein translation in neuronal dendrites, we looked at local protein synthesis in neuronal dendrites in these structures called RNA granules, where we actually see with retinic acid stimulation within 10 minutes, you see rapid increase in the synthesis of the amper receptor subunit, GLUR1 protein. But in these RNA granules, we also see numerous amount of fMRP particles, fMRP proteins, labeled with these five nanometer um, gold particles that are very small to see, but I'm highlighting them with re these red arrows. So, um, so what is fMRP doing there? So one of the things we did was to look at in the fMRP knockout neurons, whether RA synthesis is still normal. So without describing the details, we use a reporter that expressed GFP under the control of RA. So if you have more RA in the neuron, more GFP is expressed. And we show that in these fMRP, um, in these FRP knockout neurons, the synthesis of retinic acid is absolutely normal. They respond to activity blockade. These are drugs that block neuronal synaptic activity, allows the activity to shut down. And in normal neurons, there's uh, increasing RA synthesis, and so does the, um, the fragile X neurons. But what's really abnormal is that in, in the wild type neurons, when you block synaptic activity um, for a, a day or two, um, you see a robust rebound of the synaptic response, the compensation. This is what we call homeostatic synaptic plasticity. The excitatory synaptic strength is increased, but this phenomenon is completely missing in the fragile X neurons. And if we bypass the drugs that blocks activity, just dump retinic acid onto the neurons within half an hour, you see this increase in synaptic strength in wild type neurons. And again, you don't see that in the knockout neurons. So this tells you something is wrong downstream of RA signaling. Additionally, Another form of homeostatic plasticity, sort of in the same um, context, is if you block neuronal activity, not only you see increase in synaptic excitation, you see also decrease in synaptic inhibition. Makes sense, right? And this can be reproduced in culture by blocking activity or um, applying retinic acid directly for half an hour. But both downregulation of synaptic inhibition, shown here, are also missing from the fragile X knockout mice. So, so this is my summary of what the, um, the very basic phenomenon is. This is a neuron that receives inhibitory and excitatory input. Some synapses are weaker than others. And decreased activities to engaging synaptic RA signaling that leads to enhancing the excitatory synapses as, as well as weakening of the inhibitory synapses. And both process, processes seem to require fMRP action. And as a result of increased E and decreased I, we have increased excitation over inhibition ratio, and that redefines having plasticity rules and allows um, the system to rebalance and, and learn um, and keep its learning capacity. Now, this is our revised, my revised model of Fragile X that we think the brain actually probably starts at a normal um, state, a synaptic EI state. Some of you said that you know, our brain probably starts off normally and somehow over the time it becomes abnormal in the um, disease state. So what we believe is that experience, in this case, behavior experience for the organism or the activity of the neural network engages synaptic RA signaling that in normal neurons leads to a new state of ERI that allows um, normal learning capacity, but this is lost in the fragile X um, animals because of the failing to engage, um, sorry, to engage RA signaling. And now we know that gene therapy is still a long way to go, so we can't really put the fMRP back to the patient's brain, but we can probably intervene from here by um, bringing the aberrant synaptic EI state back to the normal state, use um, um, chemicals and drugs, and allows the learning capacity to be restored. Um, so, Without um, delaying the whole talk, because I have to follow the whole format, um, although I'm cheating, as you know. <laughs> I'd like to thank the people who did the work. Um, this is my lab. Oops, I think that's it. Oh, well.
those were the people that did the work. Um, and the agency that gave me money to um, do our research, and I welcome questions. Thank you. <laughs>